everyone. Uh, we're back. Uh, you're back with me, Gauri, on Durian ASEAN. And here I have with me Dr. Siva Kumar, who is a senior consultant at CSK Murni Services. So, Doctor, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, very good morning, Gauri. Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I'm Dr. Siva from CSK Group. In CSK Group, we have two companies, namely CSK Murni Services in Amarhat and also Murni Engineering Services Malaysia in Amarhat. Right. Currently, we are specializing in environmental and health and safety services in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, uh, comparing to other consultants in Malaysia, where we are specializing in environmental health and services, we also uh, embark ourselves in getting ISO 14001 and OSHA 17001 certification. This, I could say that uh, not uh, many players as a consultant certifying themselves. So okay. this is where we are actually uh, different compared to other consultants mm -hmm. in Malaysia, especially. So can you explain more about the ISO 4001 right. that okay. you mentioned? Yeah. All right. ISO 4001 stands for Environmental Management System. It's, uh, actually, it's our commitment to prevent pollution in oh, the environment. Okay. Seems we are the consultant assisting our clients in Malaysia and also in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So we want to be a, a better, okay, a better consultant whereby all our staff also has to implement ISO 49 in our office okay. and also when they work at a client's premises or at a, any project site. Same goes for the OSHA certification, which stands for Occupational Health and Safety Management System. All right. So currently our main market is actually in oil and gas. Okay. Construction, mm -hmm. general industries, logistic, all right, small and medium enterprises, universities, high institution, all this. So we uh, want to show, or we want to give a better image to our clients mm -hmm. so that we are actually certified for ISO 14001 okay. and OSHA 17001. Okay. So we are comparing to other consultants in Malaysia, we are actually slightly better than them. Okay, so you said the ISO 14001 is for the pollution. Yeah. yeah. So what about the OSAS 18001? Okay, OSAS 18001 more to safety and health management system oh, okay. because our workers are actually, uh, they're working in a, they also exposed to hazard. Mm -hmm. Okay, namely working at height, all right? Mm. We're also working in a jungle, all right? Sometimes they do monitoring for the environmental impact assessment studies. Okay. Whereby they also exposed to certain hazard. Mm. During the workplace, so we, by, by certifying ourselves with the OSHA Safety One, currently we identify the potential hazard at the workplace prior commencement of any new projects. Okay, so uh, what are other services that your company offer? Maybe besides uh, right. certifying. So uh, currently, CSK Group registered under uh, DOSH Department mm -hmm. of Occupational Safety Health. Uh, we are actually can able to do chemical health risk assessment. Okay. All right. Uh, with a guideline produced by Department of Occupation Safety Health. Mm -hmm. All right. And I personally one of the registered consultant for this assessment. And besides that, we are also doing a local exhaust ventilation assessment. Whereby, okay. this is the study the performance of the component of LEV, namely hood, ducting air filters, oh. all right, fan, and as well as chimneys. All right, since more a bit the technical studies. Mm -hmm. Okay, we also, uh, as mentioned earlier, we register under DOSH, Department of Occupational Health. Okay. So we will produce a report to our client, and we communicate the report to our bosses, okay. where is Department of Occupational Safety and Health. All so right, on will. your side, you pro mostly is producing the report. Yes. Okay. But you then we are also advising, mm. uh, the, you know, the area that they actually need to improve. Ah, okay. If there is any, based on our assessment. Okay. All right. Do you provide uh, services on like how to improve? Maybe exactly. That's yeah. why we oh. have a Muni Engineering Services. Oh. This team actually uh, okay. headed by our one of our partners, mm -hmm. Engineer Tanaraj. Okay. Actually, he's uh, assisting us to look into that aspect on the right. improvement parts. Okay. So what is your current project now, Doctor? Right. What are you working right. Currently, on? we are uh, doing a lot of work within oil and gas. Okay. For example, Petronas okay. Gas Berhad. Mm. We are assisting our contractor, uh, Toyo Engineering. 
so engineering our contractor so we are helping them to carry out environmental impact assessment environmental management mm -hmm. plan okay. okay prior they embark on their uh, their whatever the work that they involve with the petronas gas and uh, i personally registered as a environmental auditor under department of uh, department of environment in malaysia okay so my role in oil and gas basically is auditing the performance of contractor in term of environment mm. so basically as mentioned earlier all projects in malaysia there is a situation where they need to sub uh, what is this? they need to comply with the eia approval conditions okay if there is a need they as a contractor they have to engage a consultant to develop environmental management plan once the environmental management plan is approved the department of environment also requested audit to be carried out on a quarterly mm. basis or on four months basis this is where i involved as a auditor under department of oh. environment to audit the performance of environmental management system at the contractor site so is this do you report back and then uh, yeah our report will go directly to because we will be playing role as uh -huh. a independent auditor okay all right of course the payment made by our main contractor mm -hmm. but the report will be very unbiased okay meaning it will go independently to department of environment whatever findings that we have we will communicate directly to them and the closure of non compliance if there is any Hmm. will be done by department of environment okay this right. department of environment is uh and government yeah he said oh. uh is under what is this uh natural resources oh ministry of natural uh, resources, resources you know. yeah okay so you actually uh we are registered we are registered oh, okay. under them uh so do you have to report back to them as yes, well yeah yes. okay hmm. So you were talking about EIA just now. Mm. What is that stuff? Okay, for? EIA is an environmental impact assessment. Okay. Or uh, actually, there is a order, environmental impact assessment order 1987 in Malaysia, mm -hmm. whereby there are uh, there are almost 17 prescribed activities that are subject to environmental impact assessment. Okay. All right. So uh, under the law, uh, under the order, it mm -hmm. has mentioned clearly what are the activities. So I can right. share with you, for example, infra work whereby mm -hmm. we are involved in a um, mass rapid transit project (MRT). Okay. Currently, okay. you know, right, the yeah. heavy traffic in Malaysia true, is due true. to this. Uh, we are involved. Especially near Damansara. Ah, uh, yeah, we okay. are involved with that. Uh. So, meaning we are doing environmental monitoring for that project mm. for one of our giant client is Amazaki Resources Berhad. Okay. All right. So you monitor. the safety hazards as well no for mrt we are involved in environmental oh just environmental monitoring, monitoring. Oh, okay so it says here that uh you are also uh an expert on the air quality level and all that is all it all right so currently uh, we are doing some modeling for environmental impact assessment air okay. quality modeling okay. all right uh, of course we also assisted by other consultant to deliver this work mm mm-hmm. uh we have done many uh, what is this uh, modeling to know what will be the potential impact upon completion or during uh. you know the projects mm. so this will give give a uh, input to the government especially when they want to do decision to approve the projects so you actually uh, measure the quality before and after the project no it? modeling means we what will be the potential impact after a few oh. years uh, this modeling so monitoring means we have, we can do mm. uh, before uh, eia approvals okay. meaning uh, during you know virgin jungles what is uh, the air level uh, right uh -huh. so and then once the project is uh, approved by government mm. namely department of environment mm -hmm. of course prior to approve there will be oac on stop okay. center they will invite all our you know stakeholders hmm. all right so they will give input if there is uh, any uh, limitation they will ask the consultant to improve in their report mm -hmm. then they will give back to the osc they okay. will sit for the meeting there will, there will be a you know, like so called like you know uh, interview session presentation right. session all right why you are actually looking into this area mm -hmm. you may lack on certain areas they will advise us accordingly then 
what's the project uh, what is the mm-hmm. condition is issued it will go to the contractor okay all right the contractor has to follow all the condition mm-hmm. strictly in malaysia okay. because currently in malaysia all the legal requirements are in order mm-hmm. there's no shortfall okay uh, no so loophole. it is our commitment as a consultant as mm-hmm. well as the contractors in malaysia to comply very strictly okay. to ensure that pollution is prevented mm-hmm. right and minimize where necessary and also to give a better image to the malaysian environment all right, all right. okay so is your company the only one in malaysia that's doing no, this no we have no a lot of friendly uh, competitors okay. uh, in malaysia <laughs> friendly we do welcome uh, we do welcome right. because the market is very big all right, all right. Uh, there are a lot of players No. So besides MRT is there anything else that your company is in charge of? No? All right. Car uh, we also one of the consultant for East Coast Highway. East Coast. Oh, uh, the East Coast Highway. Yeah, uh, East Coast. Okay. Uh, so we managed to get uh, almost four packages. All right. So our major client is uh, Amazaki Resource Berhad mm-hmm. as well as uh, Cergas Muni. All right. And then we have Marimas, few other contractors. So the the scope that we actually assist them is environmental monitoring, mm-hmm. air quality, water quality, noise quality, uh, as well as we also engage our third party auditors to carry out the audits. So what do these third party auditors? Okay, third do? party auditors is actually if we do monitoring, we cannot do auditing uh, because we are uh, actually doing our you know we are. Right. bias okay, uh, that's why okay. we need to engage third parties uh, mm. so you need a third party to uh, come some in some cases i will in, be involved as a third parties okay. for example other friendly competitors mm. they will be doing the monitoring they engage us as a third party mm. auditor all right so what are the different uh, assessments and monitoring like instruments or equipment that uh, you are using all right so currently uh, for anno air quality monitoring mm-hmm. or air quality monitoring uh, we are doing eye volume air sampler okay. or eye volume air sampler whereby we need to use eye volume sampler with genset the power generated from uh-huh. the genset okay. so we that's why as mentioned earlier uh, we already been certified for iso 40001 mm-hmm. so that's why we are no longer using this eye volume air sampler okay. with a genset so we want to show that we want to prevent pollution we don't want mm. our activities you know our uh, monitoring exercise giving impact to the environment okay. so what we have done is we already bought a mini volvo mm-hmm. whereby this one will be using uh, batteries and the battery can be rechargeable oh. so that mean we won't be using right. a genset okay. or generator okay. to produce power mm. to run our i volume assembler In fact, to run the uh, what is this uh, high volume air sampler, sometimes we need a uh, diesel. Oh. All right. Uh, so to put into what is this right. genset. Okay. So diesel, you know, right? Uh, yeah. Also, you know, uh, what is this? Uh, it's it's a fuel, right. uh, fossil fuel. Mm. So we need to, you know, conserve natural it. resources, mm-hmm. okay. all these. So we need to conserve. This way, we have taken one step better. Mm-hmm. In fact, there are a lot of friendly competitors also trying to do oh, this, okay. which we welcome it as a group. Because we, as a Malaysian, we mm-hmm. need to welcome all our good effort to minimize the environmental impact okay. from any activities. So, have you worked on any project outside of Malaysia? Or? Okay, we have done uh, auto monitoring uh-huh. in uh, one of our projects in uh, Thailand, okay. or uh, especially in uh, food packaging. Mm. So, and also we have uh, uh, submitted some proposal to Brunei mm-hmm. to do some what is this uh, joint venture work right. in terms of this. So, actually, to be frank with you. Mm-hmm. any consultant throughout south east asia uh-huh. or uh, the basic is we need to have knowledge right. once you have knowledge mm-hmm. the legal requirement more or less same mm-hmm. all right okay the study is more or less same because environmental is actually is a known subject okay, okay? if yeah. you know the subject mm. you can do any project in, th- mm. in south east asia So what are the specific knowledge that you need to have to do what you're doing? Of course, uh, you must have a uh, know uh, knowledge in environment. Uh-huh. Maybe if you have a degree uh-huh, or okay. master, master or PhD in, in envi- like environment uh, science, environmental science, yes. Okay. Uh, and then you must have good knowledge in understanding 
legal requirements right so some whatever legal country that we right. are working for okay. uh, because whatever studies that we do mm-hmm. it has to be reflect to okay. the what is this uh, to the their nation's needs all right, right the country's needs mm. so uh, we'll talk about uh, maybe the air level in malaysia right now all right uh, so what is uh, the pollution level if i may the air as quality. of yesterday mm. the level is in a in a good condition oh right. okay but in <laughs> uh, somewhere in march you, you're being honest right yeah yeah <laughs> uh, yeah okay this is in good condition okay only several area maybe in a moderate status mm. uh, but uh, of course generally is okay okay but, uh, compared to last month uh-huh. you know in early of the march right. all right the air pollution index okay especially at the port klang area mm-hmm. selangor region mm-hmm. is reach around 308 okay all right and uh, other areas somewhere in kal is reach around under 50 all right so if the api air pollution index level between 200 to 300 uh deem very unhealthy oh mm. Two to three hundred. While anything is above three hundred is considered hazardous. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> so Klang is very hazardous right now. Uh, no, not right now. Uh, now okay. Oh, last uh, month. Last sorry. month the result was a bit. Okay. Uh, this source actually we taken from Department of Environmental. Mm-hmm. All right. They have their own statistic. All right. So one hundred fifty will be considered unhealthy as well. Lah. Mm, yes, moderately. So mm. what would be a good API to have? Yeah. you think a healthy level mm, i think below 50 below 50 yeah? yes ah, okay mm. so um what are the risk of actually uh, inhaling polluted air okay uh, you see uh, the there is a lot of risk okay mm-hmm. to be honest to you there's a lot of risk or oh, maybe you want to talk about uh Why has there been a lot of haze in Malaysia recently mm. first? Okay, recently because of the what it is our climate. Our climate. Uh, so, all right. Mm. Uh, because it's tend to increase the temperature. Okay. All right. Sometimes I would rather say there is uh, other polluters from Southeast Asia and right. there you know, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but we can't, you know, blame anyone. Okay. okay. Everyone have to okay. survive in their own way. Mm. All right. Sometimes The issues happen to our contractors who working in uh, other mm. countries. Okay. So we don't know exactly what right. is the root cause. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless, there must be some commitment mm. from ASEAN region, all right, uh, to work closely mm-hmm. to prevent, you know, whatever open burnings, all this. So speaking of open burning, mm. there's uh, it's actually still being widely practiced in Malaysia mm. especially if you see like the kampung areas mm. and all they don't know how to dispose their rubbish they mm. just burn everything mm, yeah. so do you ha- what what's your opinion on this all right uh, it's a very good question actually in <laughs> okay. fact uh, uh i would rather say that uh, this is actually uh this activity mm-hmm. has to be stopped right uh, at the moment you see okay. because we are actually having a lot of you know uh-huh. air issues all right Uh, we have a oh, this I has mentioned earlier mm-hmm. department of environment have a lot of you know organized uh-huh. well established regulation right okay in fact there is a regulation you know prohibiting open burning in malaysia mm-hmm. all right especially for palm oil industries all right, right. Pa- you know what this uh, plantations mm-hmm. or this they, they must apply for permit okay. approval to do open burning the burn, uh, the one you mentioned just now actually at the uh, you know kampong area right. uh, the rural uh, area uh-huh. i would rather say it is very minimal impact oh and the huge impact is uh, from the industries ag- industry oh, so okay. agriculture this is where we need mm. to tackle first uh, it see. has to g- it has given a lot of impacts to the environment okay. all right nevertheless as a malaysian mm-hmm. all right we should consider that any open burning is prohibited <laughs> you know it could, could be come from industries you know plantation but there is you said there is a law prohibiting open burning yes, right uh, we so have. what is the the fine or the okay the fine is actually uh, i can't recall okay. uh, but there is i think uh, around 100k oh. to 500k wow uh, okay that's a lot uh, yes so um 
because these people in the kampong, I feel like mm. they always complain, mm. like, oh, jerebu, jerebu, but mm. they don't know that when they are burning, they are also contributing to that. So, exactly. Will there be, should there be any uh, anyone going to the village and maybe talking to them mm. and explaining to them about this? I think that is a good move uh-huh. which uh, government should consider. Oh, we have okay. NGOs all right, right. for environment, like for example, NSEARCH. Okay. All right. Uh, so they should consider this one of their, you know, yearly plan or activities. They can do all this. Oh, okay. All right. So, doctor, we'll be taking uh, a five minute break for now. Mm-hmm. We'll be uh, back shortly. All right. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. The voice of Sherry. Hi everyone, you're back with me, Gauri uh, Dorian Asian. And guess who is here too? It's Arlene. She's hey, finally hey, hey. back. Yeah, hi Arlene. <laughs> hi Gauri. Thanks for joining us and uh, Dr. Siva this morning. We have uh, about another 15 minutes to go, I think. So uh, earlier I was talking to uh, Dr. Siva about... Uh, what he does with uh, CSK Murni services, what is the state of our quality level, what are the services they provide, what are the instruments they've been using. And I think we ended it with uh, why is haze uh, been happening quite frequently in Southeast Asia recently. So uh, now uh, can we move on to the risk of inhaling polluted air, Doctor? Yes, Gauri. And also... Arlene? Arlene. All yeah, right. hi, Dr. Siva. Uh, okay, nice to meet you. All right. So basically, uh, according to the Health Promotion Board mm-hmm. in Singapore, among healthy individuals, short-term exposure, all right, for a few days, mm-hmm. we it may give a what is this impact to the health, especially uh, can cause irritation to eyes, okay, all right, nose and throat in a healthy in for the healthy individuals, all right. And this is uh, just a few days. Yeah, of a few exposure. days. You know, when they exposed uh, to the is. Okay. All right. If we go for long term effect, mm-hmm. all right. So what happened? You know, it can give a what is this, a severe impact to the health. Right. Okay. Especially uh, risk to cardiovascular. All right. Such as heart attacks. Mm-hmm. All right. Reduce lung development. And then development of chronic respiratory disease. For example, asthma oh to right. the okay. children. Right. The reason behind it because uh, haze, the particular size basically will be lower than 2.5 micron. Uh, you so want to explain on that? Yeah, <laughs> two, okay, 2.5 micron. Because normally for any uh, studies, mm-hmm. all right, we will be based on uh, PM10, 10, 10 micron. Okay. For any new developments. Right. Okay. For haze, because of the combustion, mm-hmm. because uh, the what is this, the particle size become very small, mm-hmm. uh, up to 2.5 micron. If it is entered to our lung, it will give a lot of severe impact to the health. Okay. Uh, so that's why we have to be very careful with actually uh, air quality. Mm-hmm. And when the control is not in order, it will cause haze. Okay. All right. So I want to ask you uh, mm. my own question. Uh, actually, yeah. uh, I see a lot of people wearing the the mask yeah. during the haze. Does this actually help? Because I think that even if, if they for are particulate matter, uh, okay. For okay. example, uh, they're working. You know, it depends where they are actually during the haze. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. uh, they are if they are uh, you know actually uh, they are on the road. Mm-hmm. I don't think so is sufficient okay, uh, because okay. a lot of combustion, right, all these, you know, uh, carbon monoxide, the and then okay. the A air level is you know, not in order. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. You see now, they must use at least uh, a face respirator. Oh. Uh, what does, do, do we have uh, that there is a in cartridge. Malaysia? Oh. Uh, there is a cartridge. Okay. All right. In a very practical way, normally they buy masks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so masks, I don't think so is able to. Okay, they they may have to buy what is this, N95, okay, uh, particulate matter. Mm. What is what? that? What is that? Uh, the, the that is a mask. Okay, what kind of mask? Uh, okay, is that? actually in Malaysia uh, or maybe in uh, Asian region, there is actually a better mask. Actually, is right. available. Uh, it, well, normally we recommend, as I mentioned to you earlier during mm-hmm. our 
this program i am one of the chemical risk mm-hmm, assessor mm-hmm. Uh, in industry whenever we are actually in industry we do assessment at at the industries there are a lot of masks being used right uh, because okay. they exposed to chemical similarly for the public when they actually have to face what it is is mm-hmm. all right they may need to buy certain uh, better okay. masks for example as i mentioned earlier n95 mm-hmm. 3m brand or office So does this mask have cartridge. like extra yes, filtering? Yes, uh, it's able to filter. Uh, uh, so it's available in any pharmacies. No, uh, mask general? is available in any pharmacies. But actually, if you want a better, for mm-hmm. example, as mentioned earlier, uh, N95, okay, for particulate metals, as well as the what is this with the cartridge, half face respirator, the one mm-hmm. you can buy at uh, what is this uh, any safety equipment suppliers. Okay. Uh, they will be able to sell it. So uh, earlier you mentioned that heart attack is also one of the mm. uh, severe impact from uh, haze, right? Yeah. So uh, maybe you can explain to me how, because I don't. It's not clear to me. Because it has uh, no. It depends because mm-hmm. these are the potential studies right. uh, according to the Health Promotion Board in Singapore. All They right. have done okay. this research uh. actually. Uh, so this based on their studies. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, I think somewhere in February, end of February, early of March, mm-hmm. we had a lot of ACE issues. Right. All right. So, th- of course, there's a lot of experts studying on this. Okay. But the impact, okay. uh, no, short term and also long term. Mm. So, uh, why do you think it's good for us to ensure that the that our air quality is always uh, good and uh, in a certain standard? As in. Uh, It is important for the health, but are there like other reasons as well why our why we should maintain our air quality? You think? Yes, is one of the important uh, issues that we need to discuss. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, for example, just for to give you an idea, uh-huh. all right, a healthy human body can survive three weeks without food. Okay, all right, three days without water, hmm. but without air, we could only last for three minutes. Right. So we have to ensure. <laughs> ensure the air quality is actually in order whatever as per the uh, each country's mm-hmm. requirements so just to share according to US EPA mm-hmm. United States Environmental Protect Agency all right on average each of us breathes over 3000 gallons of air each day wow so this is the studies done by them therefore ensuring mm-hmm. proper air quality is so actually a joint effort by everyone in this world so uh what are the governmental corporation that are in charge of uh, ensuring this uh, air quality in maybe southeast asia if not malaysia alone all right uh way back in march 2010 uh-huh. there was uh, actually a uh, agreement done in uh, southeast asia mm-hmm. or would rather say in asian region all right the agreement known as uh, trans boundary air pollution okay all right so basically this uh, agreement as few what is this uh, objective so first is to cooperate in developing and implementing measures to prevent monitor and mitigate trans boundary air pollution by controlling sources oh, okay. example from the land forest fires mm. development of monitoring assessment and early warning system okay. all right exchange information and technology and as well as provision of mutual assistance okay uh, in a uh, early march we had a problem with the haze mm-hmm. okay there is a joint effort actually to minimize the haze issue throughout asian region okay, okay? especially like the singapore was very active right. the minister of environment Okay, if actually he went to Indonesia, and same goes to our minister, uh, mm-hmm. natural resources and uh, what is uh, Department of Environment, he also went to Indonesia to discuss how we can minimize these issues, and it look like you know over the past years, all right, it's become in a yearly program, oh, <laughs> all right, okay. it's become a yearly program. Mm-hmm. I think we need to find a solution, all right, to stop these issues from recurrence okay. are there any ngos uh working on anything or is it just mostly government doing it there are a lot a actually lot, uh? okay uh, for example ngos uh 
they are doing some research okay okay they are research but uh, in uh, for example malaysia is one of the secondary for the transboundary s mm-hmm. uh, agreement definitely malaysia will work with a lot of ngos in malaysia right. so they are the so called expert in certain fields they will give mm-hmm. input to the ministry to improve on that but uh in terms of the current <coughs> uh his problem uh, especially happening uh, quite a few months ago uh, why uh it seems like there's no progress in terms of intergovernmental cooperation in tackling the his issue so as what i mentioned just now okay there there is a agreement mm-hmm. all right it's done mm-hmm. all right the how well they actually looking into this issue right. all right as mentioned earlier during our earlier discussion all right mm-hmm. maybe it's come from our own country you know contractors oh. who become the culprit sorry to say okay. all right maybe other people as like singaporean went to you know other place they do this so that's why we have to find a mutual and a, you know long term understanding okay. so we shouldn't do any open burning normally a is arise due to open burning mm-hmm. uh, so we have to find a better solution Uh, strictly comply with the whatever agreement that has been made but uh, most of the open burning hmm. are they done by individuals or done by actually large scale companies that have uh, intergovernmental links to answer this actually um, it's made due to certain uh, developments involved mm-hmm. all right uh, for example they want to do a plantation okay. all right or uh, they want to do any developments in in, in uh, any countries or right? they need to do site clearings Right, any mm-hmm. development need to site clearing if may find the short you know or shortcut to do this uh to shortcut uh, what is this the activities the best way is do open burning right uh, okay. so this where the open burning you know the air travel very fast all right okay uh, so he give the impacts so at us, earlier when neighbors. we talked yeah. about it you said much more than the open burning mm. is the industrial burning yeah. that is actually causing the haze mm. problem right yeah but uh, open burning open mm-hmm, burning right. is uh, one of the contributor okay. industrial burning also one of the contributors mm. so uh, i think uh, our the final question i would like to ask is mm. what is the way forward for malaysia or maybe asean as a whole to adopt a better uh, air quality control and policy for um, personal point of view mm-hmm. i believe public awareness is the most important all right okay actually is the key in efforts lah huh? all right policy makers should invest time and effort on creating a solid public awareness among the people in asian it should be made as a way of life by the people to ensure good air quality mm-hmm. all right secondly a more stringent policy should be put in place to ensure open burning and other form of air pollution to be prevented okay do you mean like heavier fines or should we put them in jail people who because do we would have a mm. agreement okay. okay they must be a sincerity to comply right. with uh, otherwise it's uh, like a documents okay uh, and it's just all some, talk and no action yeah actually there are ag- uh, implementation okay. agreement being complied but how severe how mm-hmm. no how well it has been taken care in terms of the agreement so uh, i think that's uh, kind of all the time we have for today so uh, thank you very much dr siva for sharing your knowledge and your expertise on this subject matter all right uh, thank you very much alin for joining us i thank hope you. our readers have learned a lot today about the air quality in our country so uh thank you thank you kasuri colors of sherry do you know sun hi everyone uh, we're back uh you're back with me gauri on durian asian and here i have with me dr siva kumar who is a senior consultant at CSK Murni Services. So doctor you want to introduce yourself? Uh, very good morning Gauri. Yes. Okay. Uh, actually uh, I am Dr. Siva from CSK Group. In CSK Group we have two company namely CSK Murni Services in Amarhat and also Murni Engineering Services Malaysia in Amarhat. All right. 
currently we are specializing in environmental and health and safety services in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, comparing to other consultants in Malaysia, where we are specializing in environmental health and services, we also uh, embark ourselves in getting ISO 14001 and OSHA 17001 certification. This I could say that uh, not uh, many players as a consultant certifying themselves. So okay. this is where we are actually uh, different compared to other consultants mm. in Malaysia, especially. So can you explain more about the ISO 14001 right. that okay. you mentioned? Yeah. All right. ISO 14001 stands for Environmental Management System. It's uh, actually is our commitment to prevent pollution. In the oh, environment, okay. seems we are the consultant assisting our clients in Malaysia and also in Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. So we want to be a a better, okay, a better consultant whereby all our staff also has to implement ISO 49 in our office okay. and also when they work at a client's premises or at a, any project site. Same goes for the OSHA certification, which stands for Occupational Health and Safety Management System. All right. So currently, our main market is actually in oil and gas, okay. construction, mm-hmm. general industries, logistics, all right, small and medium enterprises, universities, high institution, all this. So we have want to show or we want to give a better image to our clients Mm-hmm. So that we are actually certified for ISO 14001 okay, and OSHA okay. 17001. So we are comparing to other consultants in Malaysia, we are actually slightly better than them. Okay, so you said the ISO 14001 is for the pollution. Yeah. Right? So what about the OSHA 18001? Okay, OSHA 18001 more to safety and health management system oh, okay. because our workers are actually, uh, they are working in a, they also exposed to hazard. Mm-hmm. Okay, namely working at height, all right. Mm. We're also working in a jungle, all right? Sometimes they do monitoring for the environmental impact assessment studies. Okay. Whereby they also exposed to certain hazard mm. during the workplace. So we, by, by certifying ourselves with the OSHA 7001, currently we identify the potential hazard at the workplace prior commencement of any new projects. Okay. So, uh, what are other services that your company offer maybe besides uh, right. certifying? So, uh, currently CSK Group registered under uh, DOSH, Department mm-hmm. of Occupational Safety Health. Uh, we are actually can able to do chemical health risk assessment. Okay. All right. Uh, with a guideline produced by Department of Occupational Safety Health. Mm-hmm. All right. And I personally one of the registered consultant for this assessment. And besides that, we're also doing a local exhaust ventilation assessment, whereby mm. this is the study, the performance of the component of LEV, namely hood, ducting, air filters, oh. all right, fan, and as well as chimneys. All right, since more a bit the technical studies. Mm-hmm. Okay, we also, uh, as mentioned earlier, we registered under DOSH, Department of Education and Health. Okay. So we will produce a report to our client and we communicate the report to our bosses okay. where is the Department of Occupational Safety and Health. Or so on in your side you pr- mostly is producing the report. Yes. Okay. But then we are also advising mm. uh, the you know the area that they actually need to improve ah, okay. if there is any based on our assessment. Okay. All right. Do you provide uh, services on like how to improve? Maybe exactly. That's yeah. why we oh. have a Muni Engineering Services. Oh. This team actually uh, okay. headed by our one of our partners, mm-hmm. Engineer Tanaraj. Okay. Actually, he's uh, assisting us to look into that aspect on right. the improvement parts. Okay. So what is your current project now, Doctor? Right. What are you working right. Currently, on? Currently, we are uh, doing a lot of work within oil and gas. Okay. For example, okay. Petronas Gas Berhad. Mm. We are assisting our contractor, uh, Toyo Engineering. Toyo Engineering, our contractor. So we are helping them to carry out environmental impact assessment, environmental management Mm-hmm. Plan okay. okay. Prior, they embark on their, uh, their whatever the work that they, they involve with the Petronas gas, and uh, I personally registered as a environmental auditor under Department of uh, Department of Environment in Malaysia. Okay. So my role in oil and gas basically is auditing the performance of contractor in terms of environment. Mm-hmm. So basically, as mentioned earlier, 
all projects in Malaysia, there is a situation where they need to sub, uh, or this, they need to comply with the EIA approval conditions. Okay. If there is a need, they, as a contractor, they have to engage a consultant to develop environmental management plan. Once the environmental management plan is approved, the Department of Environment also requested how it to be carried out on a quarterly mm -hmm. basis or on four months basis. This is where I involved as an auditor under the Department of mm. Environment to audit the performance of environmental management system at the contractor site. So is this, do you report back and then... Uh, yeah, it's our report will go directly to, because we will be playing role as uh -huh. an independent auditor. Okay. All right. Of course, the payment made by our main contractor, mm -hmm. but the report will be very unbiased. Okay. Meaning it will go independently to Department of Environment. Whatever findings that we have, we will communicate directly to them. And the closure of non-compliance, if there is any, hmm. will be done by Department of Environment. Okay. This right. Department of Environment is uh, a government... Yeah, it's, a, oh. uh, it's under... Uh, what is this? Uh, natural Resources. Oh, Ministry of Natural uh, Resources. Uh, resources yeah. Oh, okay. So you actually... Uh, we are registered. We are oh, registered okay. under them. Uh. So do you have to report back to them? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay. Hmm. So you were talking about EIA just now. Hmm. What does that stand okay. for? Okay. EIA is an Environmental Impact Assessment. Okay. Or actually there is an order. Environmental Impact Assessment Order 1987 in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Whereby there, is, uh, there are almost 17 prescribed activities that are subject to Environmental Impact Assessment. Okay. All right. So um, under the law, um, under the order, it mm -hmm. has mentioned clearly what are the activities. So I can right. share with you, for example, infra work, whereby mm -hmm. we are involved in a um, mass rapid transit project (MRT). Okay. Currently, okay. you know, right, the yeah. heavy traffic in Malaysia true, is due true. to this. Uh, we are involved. Especially near Damansara. Uh, yeah, yeah, we are okay. involved with that. Uh -huh. So meaning we are doing environmental monitoring for that project mm. for one of our giant client is Amazaki Resources Berhad. Okay. All right. So you monitor the safety hazards as well? No, for MRT, we are involved in the environmental, oh, just environmental monitoring. monitoring. Oh, okay. So it says here that uh, you are also uh, an expert on the air quality level and all that, is all it? All right. So currently, uh, we are doing some modeling for environmental impact assessment, air okay. quality modeling. Okay. All right. Uh, of course, we are also assisted by other consultants to deliver this work. Mm -hmm. uh, we have done many uh, what is this uh, modeling to know what will be the potential impact upon completion or during uh. you know the projects. Mm. So this will give give a uh, input to the government, especially when they want to do decision to approve the projects. So you actually uh, measure the quality before and after the project? Is no, modeling means what will be the potential impact after a few oh. years, uh, this modeling. So monitoring means we, have, we can do mm. uh, before uh, EIA approvals, okay. meaning uh, during you know, virgin jungles, what is uh -huh. the air level, uh -huh. right? So, and then once the project is uh, approved by government, mm. namely Department of Environment, mm -hmm. of course, prior to approve, there will be OAC, Okay. One stop center, they will invite all our you know, stakeholders. Hmm. All right, so they will give input. If there is uh, any uh, limitation, they will ask the consultant to improve in their report. Mm -hmm. Then we will give back to the OAC. They okay. will sit for the meeting. There will, there will be a you know, like so called like you know uh, interview session, presentation right. session. All right, why you are actually looking into this area? Mm -hmm. where you may lack on certain areas. They will advise us accordingly. Then, once the project, what is the mm -hmm. condition is issued, it will go to the contractor. Okay. All right. The contractor has to follow all the condition mm -hmm. strictly in Malaysia. Okay. Because currently in Malaysia, all the legal requirements are in order. Mm -hmm. There's no shortfall. Okay. Uh, no so loophole. it is our commitment as a consultant as mm -hmm. well as the contractors in Malaysia to comply very strictly okay. to ensure that. Pollution is prevented, mm -hmm. right, and minimized where necessary, and also to give a 
better image to the Malaysian environment. All right. All right. Okay. So is your company the only one in Malaysia that's doing no, this? No, we have no. a lot of friendly uh, competitors okay. uh, in Malaysia. <laughs> friendly we do welcome. Uh, we do welcome right. because the market is very big. All right. All right. Uh, there are a lot of players. So yeah. besides MRT, is there anything else that your company is in charge of? No? All right. Car, uh, we also one of the consultant for East Coast Highway. East Coast. Oh, uh, the East Coast Highway. Yeah, uh, East Coast. Okay. Uh, so we managed to get uh, almost four packages. All right. So our major client is uh, Amazaki Resourceable Heart, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Chirgas Muni. All right. And then we have Marimas, few other contractors. So the the scope that we actually assist them is environmental monitoring, mm -hmm. air quality, water quality, noise quality, uh, as well as we also engage our third party auditors to carry out the audits. So what do these third party auditors? Okay, third do? party auditors is actually if we do monitoring, we cannot do auditing uh, because we are uh, actually doing our you know we are. Right. Bias. Okay, uh, that's why okay. we need to engage third parties. Uh, mm -hmm. So you need a third party to uh, come some in. Some cases, I will in be involved as a third party. Okay. For example, other friendly competitors, mm -hmm. they will be doing the monitoring. They engage us as a third party mm -hmm. auditor. All right. So what are the different uh, assessments and monitoring like instruments or equipment that uh, you are using? All right. So currently, uh, for annual... Air quality monitoring. Mm -hmm. Alright, air quality monitoring. Uh, we are doing eye volume air sampler. Okay. Alright, eye volume air sampler. Whereby we need to use eye volume sampler with genset, the power generated from uh -huh. the genset. Okay. So we, that's why as mentioned earlier, uh, we already been certified for ISO fourteen thousand one. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are no longer using this eye volume air sampler okay. with a genset. So we want to. Show that uh, we want to prevent pollution. We don't want mm. our activities, you know, our uh, monitoring exercise giving impact to the environment. Okay. So what we have done is we already bought a mini wall, mm -hmm. whereby this one will be using uh, batteries, and the battery can be rechargeable. Oh. So that means we won't be using right. a genset okay. or generator okay. to produce power mm -hmm. to run our high volume assembler. In fact, to run the uh, what is this uh, high volume sampler, sometimes we need uh, diesel. Oh. All right. Uh, so to put into what is this right. genset. Okay. So diesel, you know, right? Uh, yeah. Also, you know, uh, what is this? Uh, it's it's a fuel, right. uh, fossil fuels. Mm. So we need to, you know, conserve natural it. resources. Mm. Okay. All these. So we need to conserve. This way, we have taken one step better. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are a lot of friendly competitors also trying to do oh, this, okay. which we welcome it as a group. Because we, as a Malaysian, we mm. need to welcome all our good effort to minimize the environmental impact okay. from any activities. So have you worked on any project outside of Malaysia? Or? Okay, we have done uh, auto monitoring uh -huh. in uh, one of our projects in uh, Thailand, okay. or, uh, especially in uh, food packaging. Mm. So And also we have uh, uh, submitted some proposal to Brunei mm -hmm. to do some what is this, uh, joint venture work right. in terms of this. So actually, to be frank with you, mm -hmm. Any consultant throughout Southeast Asia, uh -huh. or, uh, the basic is we need to have knowledge. Right. Once you have knowledge, mm -hmm. the legal requirement more or less same. Mm -hmm. all right? Okay, the study is more or less same because this environmental is actually is a known subject. Okay, okay? if yeah. you know the subject, mm -hmm. you can do any project in, mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia. So, what are the specific knowledge that you need to have to do what you're doing? Of course, uh, you must have uh, you know, uh, knowledge in environment. Uh -huh. Maybe if you have a degree uh -huh, or okay. master, master or PhD in, in envi like environment uh, science, uh, environmental science, yes. Okay. Uh, and then you must have good knowledge in understanding legal requirements. Right. So, in some whatever legal knowledge. country that we you right. are working for, oh, okay. uh, because whatever studies that we do, mm -hmm. it has to be reflect. To okay. the what is this? Uh, to the their nation's needs, all right? right. The country's needs. Mm. So uh, we'll talk about uh, maybe the air level in Malaysia right now. All right. Uh, so what is uh, the pollution level, if I may? The air as quality? of yesterday, mm. the level is in uh, 
in a good condition. Oh, right? okay. But in uh, somewhere in Are March. You, you're being honest, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay, it's in good condition. Okay. Only several area, maybe in a moderate status. Mm. Uh, but uh, of course, generally is okay. Okay. But, uh, compared to last month, uh-huh. you know, in earlier of the March. Right. All right. The air pollution index, okay, especially at the Port Klang area, mm-hmm. Selangor region, mm-hmm. is reached around 308. Okay. All right. And uh, other areas, somewhere in Cal, is reached around under 50. All right. So... If the API air pollution index level between 200 to 300 uh, deem very unhealthy. Oh, mm. two to three. While anything is above 300 is considered hazardous. Wow. Mm. <laughs> so Klang is very hazardous right now. Uh, no, not right now. Uh, now okay. Oh, last uh, month. Last sorry. month the result was a bit. Okay. Uh, this source actually we taken from Department of Environmental. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, they have their own statistic. Right. So 150 will be considered unhealthy as well. Mm, yes, moderately. So mm. what would be a good API to have? Yeah. You think a healthy level? Mm, I think below 50. Below 50, yeah. Yes. Ah, okay. Mm. So um what are the risk of actually uh inhaling polluted air? Okay, uh, you see uh the There is a lot of risk, okay? Mm-hmm. To be honest to you, there's a lot of risk. Oh, maybe you want to talk about uh, why has there been a lot of haze in Malaysia recently mm-hmm. first? Okay, recently because of the, what it is, our climates. Our climate. Uh, so, right, mm-hmm. uh, because it tend to increase the temperature. Okay. Right. Sometimes, I would rather say, There is uh, other polluters from Southeast Asia, right. as you know, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but we can't, you know, blame anyone. Okay. Okay. Everyone have to okay. survive in their own way. Mm. All right. Sometimes the issues happen to our contractors who working in uh, other mm. countries. Okay. So we don't know exactly what right. is the root cause. Mm-hmm. Nevertheless, there must be some commitment mm. from Asian region, all right, uh, to work closely mm-hmm. to prevent, you know, whatever open burnings. All this. So speaking of open burning, mm. there's a, it's actually still being widely practiced in Malaysia, mm. especially if you see like the kampong areas mm. and all. They don't know how to dispose their rubbish. They mm. just burn everything. Mm, yeah. So do you? Ha- what What's your opinion on this? All right, uh, it's a very good question actually. In <laughs> okay. fact, uh, uh, I would rather say that uh, this is actually uh, this activity mm-hmm. has to be stopped. Right. Uh, at the moment, you see, okay. because we are actually having a lot of, you know, uh-huh. air issues, all right. Uh, we have, a, oh, that's why I was mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. Department of Environment have a lot of, you know, organized, uh-huh. well-established regulation. Right. Okay. In fact, there is a regulation, you know, prohibiting open burning in Malaysia, mm-hmm. all right. Especially for palm oil industries, all right. right? Pa- you know, all these uh, plantations, mm-hmm. all these, they, they must apply for permit, okay. approval to do open burning. The burn, uh, the one you mentioned just now, actually at a uh, you know kampong area, right. uh, the rural uh-huh. area, uh-huh. I would rather say it is very minimal impact. Oh. And the huge impact is uh, from the industry, ag- industry oh, or okay. agriculture. This is where we mm. need to tackle first. Uh, it see. has to, g- it has given a lot of impacts to the environment. Okay. All right. Nevertheless, as a Malaysian, mm-hmm. all right, we should consider that any open burnings. Is prohibited, <laughs> you know. It could, could be come from industries, you know, plantations. But there is, you said there is a law prohibiting open yes. burning, right? Uh, so have. what is the the fine or the? Okay, the fine is actually uh, I can't recall, okay. uh, but there is I think uh, around 100 k oh. to 500 k. Wow. Uh, okay, that's uh, a lot. Uh, yes. So um. Because these people in the kampong, I feel like mm. they always complain, mm. like oh jerebu jerebu, but mm. they don't know that when they are burning, they are also contributing to that. So exactly. Will there be? Should there be any uh, anyone going to the village and maybe talking to them mm. and explaining to them about this? I think that is a good move, uh-huh. which uh, government should consider. Uh, We have okay. NGOs, all right, right, for environment, like for example, Ensearch, okay. all right. Uh, so they should consider this one of their, you know, yearly plan or activities 
they can do all this. Ah, okay. all right. So, Doctor, we'll be taking uh, a five-minute break for now. Mm. We'll be uh, back shortly. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. The voice of Sherry. Hi everyone, you're back with me, Gauri uh, Dorian Asian. And guess who is here too? It's Arlene. She's hey, finally hey, hey. back. Yeah. <laughs> Hi Arlene. Hi Gauri. Thanks for joining us and uh, Dr. Siva this morning. We have uh, about another 15 minutes to go, I think. So uh, earlier I was talking to uh, Dr. Siva about... Uh, what he does with uh, CSK Murni services, what is the state of our quality level, what are the services they provide, what are the instruments they've been using. And I think we ended it with uh, why is haze uh, been happening quite frequently in Southeast Asia recently. So uh, now, uh, can we move on to the risk of inhaling polluted air, Doctor? Yes, Gauri. And also... Arlene? Arlene. All yeah, right. hi, Dr. Siva. Uh, okay, nice to meet you. All right. So basically, uh, according to the Health Promotion Board mm -hmm. in Singapore, among healthy individuals, short-term exposure, all right, for a few days, mm -hmm. we it may give us what is this impact to the health, especially uh, can cause irritation to eyes, okay, all right, nose and throat in a healthy in for the healthy individuals, all right. And this is uh, just a few days. Yeah, of a few exposure. days. You know, when they exposed ah. to the ace. Okay. All right. If we go for long term effect, mm -hmm. all right. So what happened? You know, it can give a uh, what is this, a severe impact to the health. Right. Okay. Especially uh, risk to cardiovascular. All right. Such as heart attacks. Mm -hmm. All right. Reduce lung development. And then development of chronic respiratory disease. For example, asthma All to right. the okay. children's. All right. The reason behind it because uh, haze, the particular size basically will be lower than 2.5 micron. Uh, Do you so want to explain on that? Yeah, <laughs> two, okay, 2.5 micron. Because normally for any uh, studies, mm -hmm. all right, we will be based on uh, PM10, 10, 10 micron. Okay. For any new developments. Right. Okay. For haze, because of the combustion, mm -hmm. because uh, the what is this, the particle size become very small, mm -hmm. uh, up to 2.5 micron. If it is entered to our lung, it will give a lot of severe impact to the health. Okay. Uh, so that's why we have to be very careful with actually uh, air quality. Mm -hmm. And when the control is not in order, it will cause haze. Okay. All right. So I want to ask you uh, mm. my own question. Uh, actually, yeah. uh, I see a lot of people wearing the the mask yeah. during the haze. Does this actually help? Because I think that even if, if they for are particulate matter, uh, okay. For okay. example, uh, they're working. You know, it depends where they are actually during the haze. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. uh, they are if they are uh, you know actually uh, they are on the road. Mm -hmm. I don't think so is sufficient okay, uh, because okay. a lot of combustion, so right, all these, and you know, uh, carbon monoxide, the and then okay. the A L level is you know not in order. Mm -hmm. I don't think so is you know they must use at least uh, a face respirator. Oh, uh, what the, do, do we have uh, that there is a in cartridge. Malaysia? Oh. Uh, there is a cartridge. Okay. Alright, in a very practical way, normally they buy masks. Mm -hmm. uh, so masks, I don't think so is able to. Okay, they, they may have to buy what is this, N95 okay. uh, particulate matter. Mm. What is what? that? What is that? Uh, the, the that is a mask. Okay. What kind of mask, mask okay, is that? Actually, in Malaysia, uh, or maybe in the uh, Asian region, there is actually a better mask actually is right. available. Uh, is, well, normally, we recommend, as I mentioned to you earlier during mm -hmm. our this program, I'm uh, one of the chemical health risk mm -hmm, assessors. Mm -hmm. In industry, whenever we are actually in industry, we do assessment at, at the industries. There are a lot of masks being used right. uh, okay. because they're exposed to chemical. Similarly, for the public, when they actually have to face what is ACE, mm -hmm. all right, they may need to buy certain uh, better okay. masks. For example, as I mentioned earlier, N95, mm -hmm. 3M brand, or Office. So does That's this better, mask have like extra yes, filtering? Yes, uh, it's able to filter. Uh. Uh, 
So it's available in any pharmacies? No, uh, mask is available in any pharmacies. But actually, if you want a better, for mm-hmm. example, as mentioned earlier, uh, N95, okay, for particulate metals, as well as the what is with the cartridge, half face respirator, even mm-hmm. you can buy at the uh, what is uh, any safety equipment suppliers. Okay. Uh, they will be able to sell it. So uh, earlier you mentioned that heart attack is also one of the mm. uh, severe impact from uh, haze, right? Yeah. So uh, maybe you can explain to me how, because I don't, it's not clear to me. Because the it link. has, uh, no, it depends. Because mm-hmm. these are the potential studies right. uh, according to the Health Promotion Board in Singapore. All they right. have done okay. this research, uh. actually. Uh, so this based on their studies. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, I think somewhere in February, end of February, early of March, mm-hmm. we had a lot of ACE issues. Right. All right. So, th- of course, there's a lot of experts studying on this. Okay. But the impact, okay. uh, no, short term and also long mm. term. So, uh, why do you think it's good for us to ensure that the that our air quality is always uh, good and uh, in a certain standard? As in, uh, it is important for the health, but are there like other reasons as well why our why we should maintain our air quality? You think? Yes, it's one of the important uh, issues that we need to discuss. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, for example, just for to give you an idea, uh-huh. all right. A healthy human body can survive three weeks without food. Okay. All right? Three days without water. Hmm. But without air, we could only last for three minutes. Right. So we have to ensure <laughs> ensure the air quality is actually in order. Whatever, as per the uh, each country's mm-hmm. requirements. So just to share, according to US EPA, mm-hmm. United States Environmental Protect Agency, all right? On average, each of us breathes over 3,000 gallons of air each day. Wow. So this is the studies done by them. Therefore, ensuring mm-hmm. proper air quality is, is actually a joint effort by everyone in this world. So uh, what are the governmental corporation that are in charge of uh, ensuring this uh, air quality in maybe Southeast Asia, if not Malaysia alone? All right. Uh, way back in March 2010, uh-huh. there was uh, actually an uh, agreement done in uh, Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. or I would rather say in ASEAN region. All right. The agreement known as uh, Transboundary Ace Pollution. Okay. All right. So basically, this uh, agreement has few, what is this, uh, objective. So first is to Cooperate in developing and implementing measures to prevent, monitor, and mitigate transboundary haze pollution by controlling sources. Oh, okay. Example from the land, forest fires, mm. development of monitoring, assessment, and early warning system. Okay. All right, exchange information and technology, and as well as provision of mutual assistance. Okay, uh, in a uh, early March. Yeah, the problem with the haze. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is a joint effort actually to minimize the haze issue throughout ASEAN region. Okay, okay? especially like because Singapore was very active. Right. The Minister of Environment, okay, if actually went to Indonesia, and same goes to our Minister uh, mm-hmm. Natural Resources and uh, what is uh, Department of Environment. He also went to Indonesia to discuss how we can minimize these issues and it's look like you know over the past years all right it's become in a yearly program oh, <laughs> right okay. ace is become a yearly program mm-hmm. i think we need to find a solution all right to stop these issues from recurrence okay. are there any ngos uh working on anything or is it just mostly government doing it there are a lot a actually lot, yeah. okay uh, for example ngos uh they are doing some research. Okay. Okay, they are research. But uh, in, uh, for example, Malaysia is one of the secondary for the transboundary S mm-hmm. uh, agreement. Definitely, Malaysia will work with a lot of NGOs in Malaysia. Right. Uh, they are the so-called expert in a certain field. They will give mm-hmm. input to the ministry to improve on that. But uh, in terms of the current uh, haze problem, uh, especially happening uh, quite a few months ago, uh, why uh, 
it seems like there's no progress in terms of intergovernmental cooperation in tackling the haze issue. So as what I mentioned just now, okay, the, the, there is an agreement, mm-hmm. all right, it's done, mm-hmm. all right. The how well they are actually looking into this issue, right. all right. As mentioned earlier during our earlier discussion, all right. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's come from our own country, you know, contractors oh. who become the culprit. Sorry to say, okay. all right. Maybe other people, like Singaporean, went to you know other place. They do this, so that's why we have to find a mutual and a, you know long term understanding. Okay. So we shouldn't do any open burning. Normally, A is arise due to open burning. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have to find a better solution. Uh, strictly comply with the whatever agreement that has been made. But uh, most of the open burnings mm. are they done by individuals or done by actually large scale companies that have uh, intergovernmental links? To answer this, actually, um, it's made due to certain uh, developments involved. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, for example, they want to do a plantation. Okay. All right. Or uh, they want to do any developments in in, in uh, any countries. All right. They need to do site clearings. All right. Mm-hmm. Any development need to site clearing. They f- may find the short. You know, or shortcut to do this, uh, to shortcut, uh, what is this, the uh, activities, the best way is do open burning. Right. Uh, okay. So this is where the open burnings, you know, the air travel very fast. All right. Okay. Uh, so he give the impacts. So uh, to earlier to when we yeah. talked about it, you said much more than the open burning mm. is the industrial burning yeah. that is actually causing the haze mm. problem, right? Yeah, but uh, open burning, open mm-hmm, burning right. is uh, one of the contributor. Okay. Industrial burning also one of the contributors. Mm. So uh, I think uh, our the final question I would like to ask is, mm. what is the way forward for Malaysia or maybe ASEAN as a whole to adopt a better uh, air quality control and policy? From personal point of view, mm-hmm. I believe public awareness is the most important. All right. Okay. Actually, it's the key in efforts, lah. Huh? All right. Policymakers should invest time and effort on creating a solid public awareness among the people in Asia. It should be made as a way of life by the people to ensure good air quality. Mm-hmm. All right. Secondly, a more stringent policy should be put in place to ensure open burning and other form of air pollution to be prevented. Okay, do you mean like heavier fines or should we put them in jail? People who because do we only thing? have a mm. agreement. Okay. okay, there must be a sincerity to comply right. with. Uh, otherwise, it's a, like a documents. Okay, uh, and it's just all some, talk and no action. Yeah, actually, there are ag- uh, implementation okay. agreement being complied, but how severe? How mm. no? How well it has been taken care in terms of the agreement? So uh, I think that's uh, kind of all the time we have for today. So uh, thank you very much, Dr. Siva, for sharing your knowledge and your expertise on this subject matter. All right. uh, thank you very much, Arlene, for joining us. I thank hope you. our readers have learned a lot today about the air quality in our country. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Kasuri.